today's video is my budget update. If you follow my channel before, you know every single month I actually break down and I show you my actual household budget. I break down the amounts that we pay on some of our major bills just to give you a little bit of a feel of what some other parts of the country are possibly paying for the same bills that you are. I don't show you exactly how much my household brings in, but what I do do is I share with you our money stacks percentages. So the money stacks is obviously a system that actually manages your money. It divides into certain categories. There's a video down below in the description bar that goes into more detail. So I actually show you our percentages. I don't only want to preach good money habits, I actually want to follow them with my own family. So today's video I hope you find extremely helpful if you're new to the financial freedom journey or simply if you're just looking to manage your money better. Hopefully it's some inspiration. Hi there, welcome back to my channel today. My name is Jennifer from mamafurfur.com. I make videos all about personal finance, investing and success mindset in the UK. Today's video is that special monthly budget update that I share with you. So I'm gonna take you first of all to an overhead view of our actual bills, the main bills, so you can compare them with your own. These are no means the least amount that I would expect you to pay. These are just the general amounts for up here in Glasgow so you can compare. I'm then gonna take you straight to the computer. I'll show you my autopilot money system for our percentages what we're actually saving, investing, how much actually I made as a side hustle this month as well. I wanted to share that with you. So that's all included in the spreadsheet part of the video. I also would recommend if you fancy getting smarter with your budget, check out my budgeting course. It's 18 tutorials that'll lead you through how to do a budget far better than I can explain on camera. And as always, mamafurfur.com has a wealth of resources. There's calculators there to work out savings, investments, whole bunch of stuff. Check out mamafurfur.com as well. So if you pick up a copy of my autopilot spreadsheet and this is what it looks like effectively. This is the budget part and obviously I've talked about there's different other spreadsheet tabs in there. There's how to pay off debt, how to work towards sinking funds but I'm going to actually show you, these are just specimen amounts that I'm showing you on screen right now. I'm going to actually show you our families for the majority of bills. I'll show you on the spreadsheet and talk you through them quickly. So let me talk you through some of these bills then that we have in our household. So obviously I've not put in what our salary amounts are so the spreadsheet will not calculate actually the percentages. That's why I'm not showing you that part of the screen but essentially our mortgage has a payment of £613.42 at the moment. I then overpay 10%, it's my 10% rule, any debt which at the moment we just have our home as our debt, any debt I pay 10% extra every single month. The reason being that slight increase of £60 we commit to means our mortgage will naturally be shorter as well. Roughly we're taking off 3.5 years off of our 25 year mortgage so for me it makes absolute sense to sacrifice that's £62 extra to get the benefit in the long run. We'll also see our council tax up here in Scotland. We are at £207 for 10 months. We actually include our water rate and things like that included in there. You know, there's the um, pickups for your garbage and things like that. So it's all there in one fee up here in Scotland. It is quite a lot of money, obviously, every month, but there's no way to negotiate that. We're stuck with that amount because of the type of house we live in, the area, that's the monthly amount. Then our gas and electricity, we are actually £102 pounds combined for those so at the moment I'm investigating actually switching I think we can get that a lot cheaper maybe a couple of pounds maybe even 10 20 pounds if I really try so I'm going to make sure I do a comparison soon to see even if we could get it much cheaper we have a factors fee so because we live in new builds we pay for the communal ground as well so that's non-negotiable that's part of our title deeds 13 pounds a month that we have to pay the next things of note on our optional monthly lifestyle so these are things that we could absolutely get rid of but for us there's a joy factor there and if I was really wanting to make ends as tight as possible we would sacrifice those but for us we have a bank fee of £17 a month that actually pays for the account that we have but because we get the benefits of mobile phone insurance there's travel insurance there's AA cover as well I worked out it was far cheaper to give them that money than to get those separately as we needed them in life. Our internet bill we have Sky for our broadband we don't don't have cable TV so that £33 is probably the cheapest I would find our, our high speed broadband so I'm happy with that amount. We then have various things to do with actually our internet managing so we've got a couple of hosting services that I pay for that actually allow me to do my business work. I include it in our household because just in case there was no guarantees on my business making money and then we have Spotify. So Spotify is our luxury item we always listen to music in the house.
house and so that 9.99 allows one of us to be listening to streaming music. It could absolutely go away but the amount of time that we're listening to music, I'm in the gym listening to stuff, it's a little bit of luxury with our money. So the main things to note, I've got my Vanguard minimum amount, that's our investment ice of £100. I put that up to our 10% every single month. I put the money on top, but I allow it just to be that £100 minimum amount just in case anything should happen, if there's an emergency and I suddenly need cash, that £100 is the minimum amount for my investment ISA every single month. I haven't put in our savings amount because that's obviously part of my household budget, so I don't like to show that, um, just in case people get worried that they can't achieve a similar amount of money, it doesn't matter, it's what we do with our money that counts. Then you can see we've got two mobile phones, so our contracts are actually just sim only. They're the cheapest that I have found, so I'm happy with that, for the amount of data, amount of calls. And then our food and our petrol money, food money is £350, which is a good amount. I'll include the cats, we've got two rescue cats in that as well, so their food, their kind of livelihood as well in terms of maybe the cat litter and things like that is all taken care of. And then petrol is £150. Now that used to be a huge amount of money, my husband was doing a lot of travelling every week, so was I. But £150 is actually probably overkill, might actually be closer to £120, so eventually I'd like to see that money drop as well. So as I said, these are just amounts to give you a flavour of what my family is spending. We do not have any debt, so we're not paying any debt payments. Um, it's taken us a while to get to that stage, so it is totally possible. And then the mortgage is actually our main focus goal. I really want to see how much I can throw at our mortgage. Plus, we've also got goals to have holidays throughout the year to travel. So that's all taken care of with our long-term savings pots, with our fun money. So there's always money that allows different life factors to be in there. And finally, the last thing I didn't mention was the only insurance that we have. So at the moment, we have pet insurance for our two cats who are getting a little bit older and it allows me to cover for those expenses when we need it. Um, I've tried to find cheaper but actually the benefits there is healthcare and actually seeing that I have some benefits with my company that I work for. We have private healthcare as part of my wage so I sacrifice before tax a part of my portion of my salary for private healthcare as well. So I know that we're taken care of, the cats are taken care of, everyone is safe as far as I can make it. So I hope that's allowed you a little bit of insight into our budget. Now I'm going to break down our money stacks percentages. So let's break down our budget for you. As I said, I'm going to talk you through our money stacks percentages that we achieved in this month. You will know if you follow my budget updates, April and March we decided to do something a little bit differently. We decided that we were going to use our money in a different way and kind of open up our freedom a little bit more. I'm not going to say too much, but basically we ended up dropping about 40 to 45% of our household income with that decision. This is the great thing. Thing, though about budgeting it's not actually how much you bring into your house it's more a case of how you're managing it and then we can work on bringing extra additional resources I'm all about passive income I'm all about trying to find ways to not exchange your time for money and that's what I decided to focus on really since April so if you're looking for a system to actually manage your money as well I want you to check out my autopilot money system there's a budgeting tab there's a sinking fund we can work on financial freedom you can even learn how to pay off your debt it will actually show you which method the avalanche or the snowball works for you and is best for you that will save you more money and it will actually tell you how much to put towards each individual day. So there's a ton of resources on that one spreadsheet. So if you're not managing your money electronically, you fancy trying it, go and check it out. It really changed my family's life. So the main things to note this month were our investments saw 6.3% year on year growth. So that had gone down, if you remember from last month, we were seeing closer to 9-10%. So the reason is that money is relative from the time you bought it to the day that actually you check your investments what they're worth. That difference in price they would sell for is then effectively your growth for that year. So with us, because there's that slight dip of those couple of percentages, I'm thinking it's because the economy is right now a little bit more volatile. You know, we're obviously we're coming into Brexit for the UK. A lot of my stocks and shares are UK and US driven. So that's where I assume that dip comes from. I am not worried in the slightest. I check my investments once a month because this is as if we're locked Locking it away long term. Honestly, if that was being negative, I know that the recovery would come. I wouldn't stress. It's not like having a bank account where you want to see how much money you're getting every single month. This is investments long term. So to see a slight dip, I'm still getting 6% year on year growth. I'm totally happy with that. 
So the next section is your savings rate and this is what actually is driving your financial freedom, the time to you actually achieving it. So we actually increased that to 37% this month. So that's a combination of really three things. I have my pension contributions, my husband's still paying into a pension as well. I also have our investment ISA as part of that calculation and also our long term savings. So that's an emergency fund. It's also projects are working towards like holidays, doing up the home. We have this goal to actually build our own house one day. So I actually wanted to start putting towards that. So that savings pile of 37% is total all those different avenues. So that total amount of money is actually investments, pensions in the future, but also life plans. So that's a really exciting part of it. So let's break down the money stacks method for you. So that is six individual pots of money that we actually send out with our income every single month. I designed it based on a whole wealth of information, all the books that I've read, and it seemed to be the one that allowed life to actually be designed to have freedom, work on your education, have fun with it. I didn't want to just focus on investing or pay off debt. You've got to live and enjoy the moment right now. That's the whole point in life. So we were still able to maintain that 56% of our essentials. So essentials is our bills, our food and our petrol was in 56% of our household income. That is probably the lowest I can get it. We're looking to remortgage in a couple of months just because we're coming out of a fixed term period. So it might go down, but I'm actually kind of assuming that could go up a couple of percent because we need to get out a new mortgage rate. However, I'm not worried. For me to have still between 50 to 60 percent on one solid income is fantastic in our household. So the interesting thing was only 39 percent actually of our income is for keeping the bills paid. The rest of the money is our food and our petrol for the month. So actually there's a lot of wiggle room there potentially. If I really work smart, perhaps meal plan a little bit better, perhaps even bulk buy, I'm going to see what I can achieve in September particularly because in Glasgow right now all the schools are back, nurseries back so there's less actual lunches and trips out because we've got the normal working week so maybe I should set that as a challenge for myself how much of that money that's normally food and petrol can I put into our savings next month. Our fund money and our long term savings saved at 12% same as last month it's a good solid amount and actually there's a lot of flexibility within that amount for us to do days out and to actually we're going to probably go to London a couple of times in the next month ahead just to see family and things like that so that money will allow us to do that quite comfortably. The next two pots of money are our giving money and also our education money so these are at five percent still. It's a good amount for us, I'm comfortable, I would love to see those amounts go up though and that's where we were. I'll need to get a bit smarter with perhaps some of the other funds so that maybe we've got less fun money but it's going into education so you know I'm hugely a big fan of personal development. I also we pay for classes for our oldest boy goes to swimming, he goes to different activity groups, my husband's doing some certificates right now postgraduate level. I want to still do e-courses, a couple of seminars coming up I want to go to as well. So that money is dedicated to our learning process. And finally 10% is always consistently sent to our financial freedom money. So that's effectively our investment fund. So that 10% I always buy index linked funds with. I send it off the start of the month, it comes out before any bills as well first of the month it goes out to work on that financial freedom stack. Now 10% means that we could achieve financial freedom within roughly 50 years. However, because we're actually doing those multiple sources of savings up to 37%, I know it's going to be far quicker. I'm ideally hoping within the next 10 to 15 years. Finally, I wanted to share with you a little glimpse about side hustles. So you know I preach that everyone should have a side hustle if you can. doesn't matter what you do or for how much you earn. It's always wonderful to have that little pocket of money that you are not exchanging time for or that you're actually using your skill set outside of your day job to bring more money into your household. For me the month of August was actually my most successful month, slowly been increasing um, with the YouTube channel I actually had the exposure of being named YouTube creator on the rise by YouTube UK so that meant for one whole day YouTube basically promoted me to every user so a fantastic opportunity and that actually allowed my revenue from YouTube to bump up slightly. So overall I actually gave myself a 28% pay rise purely from my side hustles. So I have e-courses, I have books, I have my spreadsheet, I have YouTube, I have different ways that I actually allow multiple income sources to our family. So my goal is every month to see that slowly increase. No pressure, don't know where it's going to take us but certainly having that extra money that then I fire back into my money stacks method, send it to investment, send it to savings, all these wonderful pockets of money 
it just gives you that sense of freedom. I'd love to see that continually grow for us. It's a fantastic way to have little extra bits of money if you want a holiday, if you're maybe trying to fund different things, and like us, if you want to change life completely. It's given me that extra buffer that allows our family just a little bit more comfort, a little bit more freedom with our time and the decisions that we're actually making with our money. So I'm really, really grateful and really excited for what else might in store for us. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I love sharing the budget update with you because it's real life. I believe that, you know, we are actual families, we're actual people living using money in the world. So what better way than to actually show you somebody doing that? My values are not necessarily, you know, the gospel that you have to follow. We are absolutely still working on improving how we manage our money. But it just gives you some kind of reference that you can say, well, it could be possible for us potentially to get one or a two or a five percent financial freedom goal. Whatever it is that you're working towards, never be ashamed of your current circumstance. There's always a future. You never know what it will bring. So if you fancy leaving me a comment, let me know how you've got on this month as well. Perhaps you want to share your financial freedom percentage, your savings rate, whatever you fancy. Leave me also a comment if you've got any titles of videos you would love to see me cover. I'd love to do that in the next month ahead as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon.